This is the Orchid Wood Shop and my name is Rod. I'm about to start the video series on building the Ian Uhtred design called Elfin, which is a fairing design, which is a double ender row and this will also have a sailing components added to it so it's a sail version as well. This is part one in that series. I'm going to be building some components first, the inside and outside stems and some frames. The reason for that is that it's 16 and a half feet long, it's going to take up some space in the shop and I really don't want to have it all set up in my way when I'm not really needing those components yet. If you feel that this set of videos is going to be of interest to you, hey, do consider becoming a subscriber or hit that like button so you'll be notified when new videos come out. With the four and a half patterns for the inside and outside stem or apron and stem traced onto this scrap piece of plywood, I'm just going to glue down my blocks. All I'm really doing here is sort of tacking them to the spots that I want and then I'm going to drive some screws from the back side to hold it in place. I've got an old bottle of CA glue here or crazy glue thick and that's going to be a quick tack hold them down. Add a little catalyst to the plywood and in a few seconds that should be fixed. Now that glue would not be strong enough to put some clamps on there and bend my laminations around there. Also on this piece of plywood, because it's been leaning outside, it's, it, it, you can see that it's kind of dirty, a bit even moldy I, su I suspect. Um, but it was a bit warped so I've actually uh, screwed down a 2 by 4 underneath there just to hold it steady and solid flat. All of this will just get discarded once I have made the inside and outside stems. You'll also notice I've added a few more blocks more in the curved area through the ends here. It's a very gentle uh, curve so shouldn't need as many blocks to pull it into place. Being that the uh, Elfin is a double ender, there is no transom in the boat. There is just two stems on either end, or one stem on either end. So I've got two patterns, one for the fore and one for the aft portion of the boat. I'll make up both and glue them up. So now the trick is to just drive a few screws in and hopefully I hit the 2x4 blocks on the bottom there. I think we're gonna do that. So I've just done a dry run to make sure that uh, these uh, laminations will actually bend around here without cracking. It seems to be going quite well. It's not that uh, sharp a curve, so I'm ready to uh, apply some epoxy and laminate these up. But first I need to protect my mold from anything sticking to it. Right, I've laid out my laminations for the inside stem or apron. I'm going to just slap on a whole bunch of epoxy on both sides. I'm using a West System 105. 205 hardener so in this cup here it's going to start to harden up fast so I want to get it poured out or smoothed out and spread around once it's spread around it's 
not going to harden up that fast or if you start to kick off. I'm using this scrap old piece of plywood left over from setting up the molds. I have no use for it and I don't really have the workbench in this small shop large enough to just set this up. So uh, yes, we'll get epoxy all over the plywood, let it harden. I then have to do the uh, outside stem and uh, then we'll just toss this piece of plywood. Temperature in here right now is about 65. Epoxy's a little bit thicker, but uh, it's not going to be an issue. In fact, I, with the fast hardener, it's probably not a bad idea to have the temperature a little lower so that I can get it all worked into here. quick grips to do the other end so I'm going to switch out put in some F clamps so I'm going to have enough clamps, I'm going to have enough clamps but quick grips are the way to go in this case just sort of easy to pull things in one handed and of course never have enough clamps in a shop clamps on there's a lot more squeeze out of epoxy I can clean some of that up and I know I'm going to be able to uh, scrape some of that off but a lot easier to remove it now than wait for it to get hard so I won't be able to get underneath but I can certainly scrape off some of this or wipe off some of this now now the other thing I need to do is I, I mean I've made this a bit oversized so that I can join one side of it or put it through the table so I'll clean up an edge and then plane it down to the exact thickness. But I still think I want to make sure they are all down onto the base. This particular end here, they seem to be running a little wild. So I'm going to uh, Make sure that they are lined up on the ends here. Pull them together and then just put a clamp over it. This is much longer than need be, but I definitely don't want to come up short because laminations are not glued together. And with that, that one's done. I'll move on and do the next one. So this is, I've marked on here, this is aft. This is the stern end of the boat. It's gonna be a little heavy. It's always the moment of truth when you take it apart here to find out that you have protected your mold well enough that it is not stuck to the mold. So with all the packing tape on there, multiple layers, let's see how we did. Hopefully this is just going to come right off of there. The slightest bit of epoxy somewhere will definitely make it stick. It's leaked out somewhere. Well, other than tape sticking to it, we're good. With the inside stem laminated up previously, I put it back onto the mold and put some packing tape on the exterior surface of it so that when I laminated the outside stem over top of it, they are not going to stick. At least that's what we're praying for. So let's have a look. See, this should all come apart pretty readily if we've protected the mold and the inside stem well enough. And 
another successful lamination. The patterns for the laminated frames come full size but only half, so from center line out. So what I've done is I've drawn a uh, just a straight line down my uh, plywood here. I have lined up with some uh, pin holes the center line along that center line and then I'm just going to put some carbon paper underneath and trace. Now I have considered whether or not to do the bending on the frames from the inside, in other words pushing and bending it into the frame or bending it over the outside of the uh, mold that I'm going to make. Um, I don't know whether it's going to make a heck of a lot of difference other than once the boat is built, will this solid frame fit in as well as we hope. There may be some shaving that need to be done on surfaces on the outer portion of the frame so that it contacts all of the plywood uh, planking on the outside. But uh, I think I'm going to go with uh, bending over the outside. So I'm going to be tracing the inside line of the frame. And I'm going to use some carbon paper, sliding it underneath, pretty straightforward. I'm doing frame number three now. The other thing that's going to be helpful is that uh, this line here is the spreader line or where the uh, forms will sit on the strong back. So I'm wondering if I draw this line straight across, when I flip the pattern over here, I can use that line to make sure, because if this is skewed just ever so slightly, in other words, this half of the framing and, or the mold is slightly different than that other half, it's definitely not gonna fit into the boat. So I'm gonna do that. Just see how we line up if I use all the same holes. Can I flip the pattern over? I can see through the paper tracing, which works. Use these exact same holes to go into. Paper is the center line coming along that horizontal line. And I can see through the back of the paper, and it appears to be darn close, sorry. So I can see through the paper here, I've got to get my carbon underneath. Two permanent frames that stay inside of the elfin. They are laminated up uh, one inch wide. And lamination for two of them to total two inches high. So I've cut up some mahogany here. I've done one strip. See if I can make the bend on the form that I've created. And we shall see. Do I have at least four inches of laminations here for the two frames. Let's hope so, otherwise it's back to the lumber yard. Oh, we come short. Well, we're gonna make one today anyways, and then uh, I'd still have to go and pick up some uh, more mahogany for, uh, for laminations. I need, why am I short here? God, I'm two pieces short. I do have one piece left over here. That is, uh, yeah, maybe I can get these two out of there. Is there a taper to the outside of the frame? I'm kind of rounding over. If I put that piece on the top edge or the inside of the laminations of the frames, I think I might be able to get by. Now I've specifically cut these a bit wider 
due to the fact that once I laminate them up, I'll want to uh, plane them down to one inch. So we're really at an inch and an eighth here. So I am going to take one of these pieces here and equal almost two inches, close to two inches. I mean, I don't suppose that, you know, one and you know, 13 sixteenths or you know, a little less than two inches is really going to be a problem. Yeah. That to the outside, I have a little over two inches, so we'll be good. Put these aside for the second lamination. We'll get on to laminating up the first frame with all of these pieces and the thinner one centered and the narrower one centered, and I'll get plain down to that. with epoxy both sides. I'm just going to add a little thick epoxy in between. This is going to be a pretty tight lamination. I really don't need a lot of epoxy in between the joints here. The less I put in, the less I'm going to have to clean up from squeeze out afterwards. I want to make sure that any tiny little gaps are definitely uh, Going to be filled with some thickened epoxy. We want to see epoxy squeezing out for sure, but not too much. If you've worked with epoxy, you know that once it's hard, it's hard. Whether this thickened epoxy is actually needed or not, there are many laminations I've done by just putting liberal amounts of epoxy on both surfaces, gluing them together. Last one, let's wipe off some of the excess, take it over the mold, and bend it around. Here is to not get epoxy all over the clouds. So you'll see this sort of one-handed operation here, I'm trying to adjust clamps. Or if I'm touching the clamps, the worst thing is grabbing it by the bar, so that when you go to use it next time, the darn thing won't slide. That's all we have time for this week in building the elephant. Next episode we'll get on to cutting out some frames and setting up the strong back and aligning everything up. So thank you very much for watching. See you next time.